Good morning and welcome to the morning crew. Mom and the morning crew? The the morning crew? The morning team? Mom versus morning? And mom versus morning. That's got a certain rhythm to it. It's about right too. Anyway, whatever you want to call it, it's October the 2nd, 2023. I'm mom. Yeah, I'm cleaning up all my stuff because maybe then I'll have some room for playing the game. Right, right. Let's see, what else do we have here? That and that. Sort that up, and let's go trade some of this stuff in. Do I keep any of that stuff on my ship? I do. There we go. And off to the nice little vendor dude down here. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Mr. Dave. You're up early, Mr. Dave. Or you're up late. Not sure which. I woke up. The dogs didn't wake me up, which is the first time in four days. The dogs haven't been doing the dance of wild anticipation. Uh, <clears throat> waiting for me to get up so we can go out and pee on things. And um, it was only like five o'clock, so I begrudgingly got up. Took them out. Got myself a cup of coffee. It has not worked yet. I'm still waiting on that coffee. Might as well clean out my inventory so I can have a nice week. Um, as I go through this... Shoop, dun, 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 dun. Is that it? That's it. Yay! Don't have much of my stuff. And so anyway, the uh, doggos let me sleep in. I'm thinking, oh my god, it must be late. 4.45. Gosh darn it! Good morning, BTD. Uh, I know we didn't have an event over the weekend aside from Dilithium, and of course I had to work this weekend, so I couldn't do the Dilithium event to speak of. Uh, that said, though, I think it's just a Dilithium weekend, not a Dilithium week. Um, most of you should be rolling up on the end of the event. I think you have to do 20 on that one. Yeah, it's like 20 out of 40 or 21 out of 40, but for most people that should be rolling up on the end and into Dilithium for that one, which you don't get the Dilithium the lithium boost on, which is a bummer. Uh, today's event. Sorry, not today's event. Today's um, word. Word that I can't speak of. Hi, Dante. Today's random universal is going to be da -da 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 -da, infected conduit. So just bear that in mind if you've got you. Um, Endeavors you get that could go into Infected Conduit, wait till noon, and you should be able to throw those together. Like, I've got AP uh, damage in space, so I can do that with Infected Conduit. I'm, I'm hanging in there this morning. I really need to take a couple of days off. I have major stuff going on at the office this weekend and next weekend. I have to work both weekends, potentially the weekend of the 14th as well. So I had to work... Oh, it was yesterday, the 30th, the 7th, potentially the 14th. Um, and then we have our all-company event on the 20th. Woohoo! Which will lead into an evening at the Indianapolis Fuel versus the Fort Wayne Comets hockey game in here in Indianapolis. Without giving anything away, and I can't give anything away, we have a... Uh, company member whose offspring is involved with one of the teams heavily. <laughs> Mr. Dave, another glorious day of unemployment. Oh, Mr. Dave, you know, I'm kind of jealous. It was such a tough week last week and this weekend of, okay, call up the money, dude. See where we stand. What would it cost for me to retire? You know, pay off every bill. Do I rent for the rest of my life? I'm not a great idea. Do I buy a house? Eh. Do I travel for the rest of my life? Can I afford to do that? Will there be any money left? All, all these questions to be asked. Yeah, I envy people who don't work. As long as you've got a way to get around your life. I did, however, finish cleaning out my storage unit yesterday. 
which was glorious in that I now don't have to spend $150 a month, but I was told if I had cleaned it out the day before, they would have waived the fees for the previous month. And it's like, no, no, why didn't I think of that? No, I can't take it with me. I absolutely intended to leave it for my son. I mean, my husband left me a chunk of change, which should easily hold me through the rest of my life, but gee, it would be really nice to be able to give that to my son, and you know, then because he's not going to have kids, then I could ensure that he'd have a comfortable life after I'm gone. Anyway, we are on... Are we on Discord? We're probably not on Discord yet, because that's way too hard for me to remember to hit that button. <coughs> we are on Discord, yes. Let me catch up to that one. Got people messaging me. After I'm gone, well, I, I meant in the grand metaphorical sense of it, Saren. Um, you know, at some point I am going to pass away. I'm not planning on it in the near future. And the genetics of my family, especially the women, I mean, I got a good 30 to 40 years to go. My grandmothers died in their hundreds. My aunts all died in their late 90s. My mom died in her 70s, but she smoked and she drank and she did really stupid things in her life. So I try not to do stupid. You know, don't do stupid. It does help. And there's always, you know, accidents that go on. But outside of that, I intend to be around for a while. But it would be nice to leave my son with enough money that whenever I do pass away, which, based on the current numbers, would put him in at about my age. It'd be nice for him to, at my age, be able to go, yes, I'm going to retire. But he has informed me that he intends to take whatever money I leave him and give it to charities for dogs. Because, you know, that's the way he rolls. He's a good boy. <laughs> no, I'm not going anywhere, sir. That That's not the plan. I'm reasonably healthy with the exception of this sore throat I've had for weeks, which turns out to be a sinus, sinus infection. So I will get some antibiotics for that today, which I, I love taking antibiotics. I take them very rarely. They are extremely effective, and I know the rules. You take them, you take all of them. But they knock me out. I am, I get queasy, I get nauseated, I get lightheaded, they work. But I'm basically in bed for the three to five days you're taking them. So I always like to let my boss know in advance, hey, I'm going to be taking antibiotics, I will be completely non-functional. Meaning I can work from the house, but I won't be doing very much. So this is interesting. I've got a message according to this on Discord. But there's nothing in Discord. Okay. There we go. Go figure that one out. So today on this channel, I've got AP damage in space. I've got harvest materials in space. And I've got defeat Herc attendants, which is, of course, home. Let's see what I've got on the other account. And don't forget, the upcoming Universal at noon will be infected conduit. So I wasn't on very much this weekend, because I never am on to lithium weekends, because life just doesn't love me. Sorry, just putting in the other one. Putting in the other channel here. So I did do a little bit of work last night on setting up the contests for Ed and sending out emails to everybody. If you are interested in nominating a name for the Ed Star, Ed's sister is getting a star name for him. Yes, I know it's a bit of a scam. I'm not judging her. I'm not spending my money on it. If I could get a star name for Ed, I would do it in a heartbeat. And have it stick. That would be amazing. Oh, I hear this sweet chirp of somebody joining me. Um, but if you would like to name a star for Ed and win a proto star, check your in-game email or go to our Discord under the mm, Club 47 
There's two uh, sites there for you to nominate the name of a star or to rename one of our fleets, which is currently named Strangers with Candy. And for a number of reasons, we are changing that, not the least of which is it's totally tasteless. And highly boring. Eh, it's not a fleet we use very much. And good morning, Josh. How are you? <laughs> good yourself. Pretty good. Yeah, for reasons we stopped recruiting to Strangers with Candy. And we That's only for strangers. <laughs> no, no. We we're never realized what that was. <laughs> yeah, I, I can tell you a story of why we're changing it, but um, I'm not going to. But yeah, there's a good reason we're changing it. So um, we decided, let's get it named for Ed in part and for Lower Decks in part, and we will make it a more Lower Decks themed fleet. Like we have a Borg fleet and we have our LGBT but I don't know if it's Q Fleet. And we have a... Uh, we don't have any more. We used to have a furry fleet, which was, you know, the kitty cat fleets. What else? We've got a bunch of fleets. So anyway, we, we want to have some fun with uh, the fleet and do a Lower Decks and Ed-themed one. So that and the star. I have two Proto Stars donated by Borg King and Sav. So if you're interested in one, winning one, or both, jump into the Discord game and make your nominations. No, you don't have to join the Discord, put in your nomination, but you have to put in your fleet name. So, or excuse me, your game name, so I know who you are, so I can send you the prize. Well, at that moment, I'll do a resistance to star base one. I can. Do you want to go Federation or KDF? I'm on Federation. Let me switch tunes then. Oops, hold on. Well, we'll be doing it twice because it's the last day of my event. Ah, so you're going to... No problems then. Let me jump back onto this account here. But I Go. will be swapping characters halfway through because, well... That's fine. Well, I'm actually, let me switch uh, out of this one then because I don't want... I suppose I could do my AP damage on this one. Yeah! Well, that didn't go the way I wanted it to. And today, hull repair space. No. Uh, physical no. damage ground. Oh, for you, yes. Torpedoes. Okay. Is what I have. You can invite me when I'm ready. Hey, Chris, you can always decline to take the Protostar. I'm sure somebody else would be willing to take it. Or you can take it and sell it on the exchange. And that should fund you for a year. I don't no, care what you do gonna, with it. Unless you're going to buy the Adelaide Dreadnought. Oh. Speaking of, I did put together all of my Dilithium, sold it off on the exchange, and bought myself the uh, new bundle for each account. One for each of them. You sold your soul. No, not at all. I sold. I had one tune with over two million to lithium. Uh, just took a few minutes and got that handled. And the other account, I bought it when they had the last discounted Zen thing that they were doing. Whenever mm. they do that, I will buy the Zen. And then with the, you know, whenever I want to switch it over to uh, stuff, I've got it. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm in the Defiant. Hmm. Okay. Sent you an invitation there. Hey, Chris, give I it to your friend. Have fun. I don't care. I I've still have 200 plus boxes, which I will open up one of these nights. And it's interesting. Saturday night, I pushed myself to stay up past 9 p.m., stayed up till 11. Wow. And I was going to stay up till 1 so that I could try opening boxes, but that's still pushing it a little bit for me. I used to stay up till 4 in the morning on Saturdays because that was my night to sit down and write. But I just haven't gotten back into writing yet. So you wanted to do uh, Resistance of Starbase? Yep. Are you ready to go? I am ready to go. Here we go. Wee woo? Wee woo. And today I should get Endeavor rank 525. Excellent. Oh, Chris wanted to go up. Hey, Chris, we're going to do it again in just a second. We're going to do this one, and then we have to come back and do it again. Because I'm, I'm happy to do it all day. So once you get the event, claim it, and then you can redo it from there on for Dilithium. Yes, but are we doing it on the separate, separate character? Because I don't want the Dilithium on this character. Mm, that's fine. I don't care. You know you can move your Dilithium from character to character. Uh, not the ore you couldn't. No, but the refined you can. Yes, I know. Okay. The reason why I'm in this ship is because I can take some damage and then do some hull repair space. 
Let's see, I have AP damage to do, but only 50,000, so that'll be all up. Boop. Oh, done. Mm hmm. On the other account, I have Iconian TFOs to do. So I guess meh. we'll do that tonight. Yeah, it is meh. It's totally meh. If it was Iconian ships. Iconian oh, ships mean. are easy. Okay. DPS time. And so much for the 50,000 damage. Would that they were all that easy. You know one of the biggest issues with this ship? Hmm. That I've foreseen so far? It's too bloody quick. Yeah, that actually is an issue on a couple of ships. I had out one of my ships, uh, I want to say it was one of my Romulan ships that I equipped with cannons, and it's not quite the right blend of cannons and engines, because you get the maneuverability, but the cannons aren't quite as effective as I'd like them to be. That's just tweaking the build. But it was really you fun. You just look at my build and now and you think, what the heck? I have the Zatvash cannons on the build, and it's kind of fun. It's certainly pretty. Wow. What are we wowing? I'm taking little to no damage in this TFO so far. Are you trying to he heal shields or hull? Hull. Take off your shields. Get out of red alert over on the edge of the map. Drop your shields and your deflectors. You'll take damage. But if you're a well-built ship, you still might not take enough damage. I have no hull, uh, I have no hull regen consoles on this ship. Oh, well, that's going to be a problem if you're healing hull. No hazard emitters? No nothing? Oh, hold on. I have um, engineering teams too, and you got something. Faster, but the one thing is, I have no, um... Basically, most of my consoles on this ship are universal. Put it that way. Well, if healing is your plan, I think, switch out your ship for the next round. I just realized the timing of long-range sensors, and immediately the ships are there. That's not very good for long-range. I was running this yesterday for my dailies, and we were doing great right up until an assimilator landed right next to one of the ships that was trying to evacuate and of course everybody went after it and warp core breached and took out the ship it's like what you just have to wait for them to get far enough away there's there's no way to win when that happens Goodness gracious, we have another ad. I did not reset that this weekend. Mm-hmm. You know the one cool thing about this ship? Hmm. It's still running the Discovery Warp Core. Because when I run the Protostar set, it's too squishy. It's not a huge surprise. I've already toned this ship down with speed by putting the power to engine, power from the power from engines to shields. Well, I like the ship, I like the build, but it's absolutely a glass cannon. 
I can take no damage, so I have to deal damage as fast as possible. <coughs> Good morning, the Chosen. I suppose Board King's not in here. Well, you know it's four in the morning for Board King. Wait, it's four in the morning for him? Yeah. So Monday, I believe, is his day off of work. I don't blame him if this is the morning he sleeps in. Oh, this is going to wipe me out. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, Board King is... Well, he's out on the west coast. Well, west-ish coast. He's out in the uh, Utah area. Which is, you know, what? Another 1,800 miles further west. So two time zones over. I think he's two time zones, not three. Even though I'm in the Midwest, I'm actually on Eastern Coast time. Well, that worked. I thank you for that. You got the damage shield? Yep. Hey, okay. Good night, Mr. Dave. Sleep well. Speaking of people you know, who should be back in bed. Mr. Dave, go back to bed. It's crazy early where you are. Well, who regen, spin speed, or max shield? I think I'll take full. Um, spin speed, actually. Mind ever? Oh, no, like, pick some royal. I was watching another streamer who had, you know, a decent building on, you know, small ships. Mm -hmm. But he always gets lost to where they are because they're that bloody small. Yeah. Yeah, but I he, know how that goes. But he actually enjoyed my Defiant build. It gave no crap to the Ninth Rule Patrol with the amount of DPS I was doing. Ninth Rule is fun. I mean, if you want to do straight out damage on deep, uh, the patrol, I like Trouble Over Turf for just showing off or wanted our Gala on Elite. <laughs> Those both take a little bit of DPS to finish. But Ninth Rule is kind of fun. Don't take my Ferengi too seriously on that one. You're in the Gagarin tonight? Or are you in yeah, I'm in a Gagarin at the moment. I thought you were in the Jem'Hadar. No, no, not on this tune. When I'm dealing Polaron damage, yes. But this is my Kitty Cat tune, and she does AP damage. There it is. Well, I'm glad I bothered to come all the way over here as so it just disappears. Well, unfortunately, that's what happens when you have a Defiant in the team. <laughs> it's the maneuverability to get there because I was on the other side of the map and boop, nope, not there. Same here. So yesterday, since it was late in the day before I got to round to playing, I did do both of the, or I did the new mission by teaming my two accounts. So basically I only have to do it once, bo both get credit for it, and then I can just turn it in today at, what is it, 2.30? Can't remember. I'm going to leave team and change to labor. And we will, I will switch team two. Let's see, what time do I have to do it? Four hours and 44 minutes. Oh! And guess what she's in? Defiant? Yup. Figured as much. Let me change tunes here just so I can have some fun. Who wants to run out there? Who wants to let go me play? Claim, let me claim my thing. Let me see. Who has not gone out? I now have the uh, universal stuff for the event. There you go. This one will be the lithium. And we're going to invite Chris to this. Thirty nice. Yeah, that was a fun little one to get. I was very happy about that. Yes. I didn't realize this that was part of it, and I got over there and I was like, oh, well, th th fun. Well, one thing about this ship, it has the battle cloak. Is this Labor? Yeah. There you go. 
My three mains, if you don't know, is myself, mm -hmm. Labour, a troll. Would anybody else troll like to... Hang on one sec. Is... Would anybody else like to join us for uh, Resistance of Starbase 1? Or Guillotine, I don't mind. Hmm? Or Guillotine, I don't mind. Or Guillotine, either one. I saw that BTD was in game. I had a fun event though on the weekend. I'm saying they're doing something or another. Some ground mission. Oh, I was doing Into the Hive for fun. And I was doing it Why on my. Would you want to do that one? For I love fun. Into the Hive. It is fun. Once I get done with all this crazy weekend stuff, I will initiate the weekend um, ground thing that we used Rich. to do with Ron. We used to have one player, Ron, who is still on. He's D Ron Guy. That's what he does. Yeah. Um, who is just great with ground. But what he started doing way back in the day was he would do Sunday afternoons and he would help you with your build for the ground. And then we would go through, walk through a Borg ground mission and he would explain it. Because this is back in the day when it wasn't just run and shoot everything. Uh, there's a few still like that, but there would be trip wires and a few other things you had to know about. And he did these really, really great Sunday events, and he would help you, you know, even acquire the stuff you need for a better ground build. So I thought we would start that up, and of course we were going to stop start it this week until... Sorry, something just popped by. Uh, <laughs> we were going to start this week, and then I had to work... This weekend, I have to work next weekend. I potentially have to work the weekend after that. Uh, so we'll start it after the 28th. Oh, by the way, we're going to pick the winner for the star and for the fleet name. By the 21st, we're going to have a party on the 28th. Yeah. Somebody just won something. <laughs> I have to go back and take a look at this. It's got to be under NPC. Topper Harley at Atiru 074 has acquired an epic... Uh, token. Does, you guys know what Topper Harley comes from? Does anybody know that one? I remember I was in all Lexington stream in the morning. I opened about a hundred Phoenix Price boxes. I got two epic. Yeah, I've done that. Before. I am sitting on so many epics from when it was easier to acquire them. Now it's not easy to acquire them, and there's very little that I want. So I'm just sitting them there. I'm not going to spend money on Phoenix Prizes right now. All right, so I have got my person ready. Is everybody ready to rock and roll? Yep. Chris, you ready? I uh, know. I can already see what ship Chris is in. Oops, I don't want to do that one. I'll give you one guess of what ship Chris is in. That mom. Um, it looks like Chris's new uh, Avenger. Am yep. I right? With the old style deflector. Yep. Well, I guess we're doing gear team. We will. We will. Good morning, Wolfie. Hey, The Chosen, um, I'm slowly working out a good strategy for guillotine. I think I've got it... was playing it over the weekend and had two meh runs on it. And it's taken me a little while to figure out a good way to do it, which is obviously the beginning. You take out your Borg cube, take out the dimensional conveyors, obviously. But the thing is... Get your biggest gun to go after the board cube, or maybe two, and everybody else start taking out the conveyors. Because the faster you get those done, the faster it goes to the stitching network. That's where it gets interesting. You have six people, and you've got five... Uh, sorry, you've got five people, six stitching networks. Stick one person to defend the base, and the other four run out to the uh, stitching networks. Defeat whatever's out there with probes, assimilator. Start it up, run straight back to base and take out everything on the way back to base, then go out to the next one and rinse and repeat, and then one person can patrol two. Because once you take out everything at the base, it takes a little while for them to respawn, and you've got enough time to get two running. 
If you just try and patrol them down at the bottom, it's, it takes a little too long. Yeah, Where I are we? Work on this. Oh, we're a new Kittimer. Hey, I like that. This is... Mm -mm. It's not the new Kittimer from the mission. No, but I like the fact that this is one where they've got the... Uh, little ring around it. I don't know what they want to call it. It's not a conveyor. And it's not really a Dyson ring. It's just a thing. Mm. I will get around to opening up all my new prizes reasonably soon. Oh boy. What are you all doing? Yeah. <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. Did you blow up? Yes. Don't blow up. I forgot this mission required some survivability. I actually chose, and the reason I was trying to talk about a strategy for doing this is because you do have it coming to you in a month. And you get the advantage of, hey, there's an easier way to do this one. With a good team, this uh, guillotine runs fast. Versus defense of Starbase 1, resistance of Starbase 1, which is a time. No matter what you do, it's time. I wonder if you can switch ships in here. Usually you can't switch while you're in a mission. I'm gonna find out. Nope, they've... There's a few where it's glitched up enough and you can do it, but they're rare. I have one tune who can switch surfboards on Ryza, which you're not supposed to be able to, in the middle of a race. Which I will tell you, does give you an advantage. Switch from future flyer back and forth to the speedier ones, but with lousier control. Oh, there we go. Stitching network time. I'm going to defend the base. Okay. <clears throat> I think the Defiance one of the better ones to defend the base. Uh, we had a couple of jellyfish sitting on it over the weekend, which works really nicely. Yeah, I have to upgrade the power on this one. It just isn't good enough. Stitching anchor deployed. Projecting shield now. Bright light. <coughs> Of course, the problem with my strategy is you have to have a fairly effective ship, <clears throat> which this one isn't. I think I'll, my legs and some my main would have been better. Yeah, but you gotta get them all out there. I'm a firm yeah. believer in equity among all my tunes. Everybody gets a chance, even the noobs. It isn't like she isn't well off, it's just the fact that she doesn't have all the toys. Where is that?
But she does hit pretty hard, so... Oh, thank you, Chris. We're missing four. So what does everyone think of the Quantum Warhead module in the Defiant? I have not played with it. Don't have a Defiant. <coughs> that I've ever opened. Yes, I have some sitting around. From what I've just tested, it hits hard though. Okay, let me get over to four. Did we lose five? No. The shield of Stitching Maker 6 is fully energized. Confirmation. Escaping Borg Assimilator has been destroyed. Well, that's not good. Good morning, Satalia. I will read Satalia's bad pun of the day in just a moment here. Get this sphere going here. They're going that way. Satalia says, My son has been eating electrical cords. What should I do? Response. Ground him until he conducts himself properly. But I'm tish. That's not a bad one. And I put up again. Oh, come now. Of course it's a bad one. It's from Satalia. They're all bad puns from Satalia. No, I just blow up again. Oh, well, don't do that. It's a bad thing. How the book stop exploding. Thank you very much, Chris. I'm way overpowered, or way outgunned here. Have some crit though. So the chosen, uh, that means you haven't gotten the new episodes yet either, right? Well. Oops. Yeah, uh, so my thing has been run the episodes, which I really enjoy. The first one, Wish Upon a Star, which I think you guys have, is okay. The second one's Good better. Volumes. Yeah, but, you know, it just ends too nice. And we all made friends. Well, the volumes are xenophobic, so... Yeah, but then we get Bright Eyes being all friendly-like. But the fact that we're trying to work with the Tholians, finally after centuries of hatred? I don't know that it's hatred. Xenophobia isn't hatred, it's fear. Which often manifests itself as hatred. How did we get another flipping commercial? I have got to reset that. Commercials for day. They're supposed Your to run once an hour. I'll get rid of this simulator. I don't have any fun toys on the ship. I do not.
Okay, here's a second one from Satalia. Cowboys in the Old West used to hang lanterns on their saddles at night to help them find their way home. It was an early form of saddle light navigation. That's very bad, Satalia. I'm putting the tough little ship to the test. Looks like I'm on the western cube here, and it's, uh, it takes a lot of damage. I'm doing the hit and run tactic from the Defiant, mm -hmm. and it's slowly working. Got one done. Go over and help on the other one. That was a three hundred and ninety eight Brit. <laughs> <laughs> I run myself into the cube. Most joyous. There we go. Yeah, but probably not today. Am I flying a Miranda? No. I am, I am flying an Atros. This is a Nakul Atros. Which I like. I think it's a fun little ship. But yeah, it definitely needs some more firepower. <laughs> well, for its time, it was good. But since Whoa. then... Since 2012 good? Pardon? 2012 good? 20, well, when did the Etros come out? 2015? You definitely need to work on it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I didn't use it for a while. And it's fine. It's generally okay. I did upgrade it to T6X. haven't done it to T6X2. It was a present from Ed, so, you know. I'm going <clears> to <throat> not give it up, but it it definitely needs to be brought up to Ed standards. We can just murder crap like nobody's business. Pretty much, yeah. And I know it can be done with a disruptor build because he's done it on a couple of his ships. Good morning, Dead 160. When was the last time you were online, Dead One? Hey, by the way, if you are uh, trying to make an entry into Discord for the contest, um, and you can't because you are in quarantine, feel free to drop me a personal message. It comes through to my phone and I can pick it up at work and I will get you guys in or let Pi know. Dante, Dante, Dante. Wolfie, we're naming a star for Ed and we're renaming a fleet for Ed slash Lower Decks. We've talked about that. Oh, so Dead One hasn't been on for about four or five years. Yeah, the game changed a lot. It changed a lot really at the beginning of the whole COVID thing. Uh, they did a lot of time dedicated to upgrading the Klingons and the Klingon uh, battles and some of the Klingon storyline and cleaning it up, which is great. We really needed it. Moopsie in the morning. Thank you. Yeah, I keep forgetting it. Thank you, Satalia. I will try and remember it's Moopsie in the morning. Tell you what, let's go in here. Uh, no, let's go there. Let's see if it's going to let me edit this while I'm live. Let's 
see. It probably won't keep this for tomorrow, Satalia, for the Moopsie in the morning, but at least I can see it when I go to change it. There we go. We are now Moopsie in the morning. So, Wolf, yes, I was talking about how I got to sleep in this morning because the dogs did not wake me up with the need to go to the bathroom at 4. In fact, I woke up at 5 and they both went, we're just going to stay here, Mom. This, this is why I took them for this crazy long walk yesterday. Was the one they said was flying a tough little ship in the Miranda class? No, uh, that's the Defiance, not a Miranda, is it? No, it's a tough class. Yeah, no, it's it's a Defiant chosen. Hence the term, one little tough ship, little tough ship. That's I'm now in the Lux. Mm -hmm. To which one responds, Look. little? Yeah, my friend just picked up the Vengeance class. With him an NX for vengeance. It's, there it goes, there's that. What do you think about the size piece? The what? One of my friends, a very good friend of mine, who's been playing for the last year with an NX class S. Mm hmm. And now he's just gone from that into a vengeance class from the Kelvin universe. Put it this way. <laughs> the size comparison is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at it here. The other big thing, though, is that turn rate difference. Learning how to fly something that big that moves that slowly. <laughs> so the other thing that I find with the big ships with the usually lousy turn rates is that they have very poor inertia. It takes a while to get moving, and once it gets moving, it takes a heck of a lot to get it to turn. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you called the Terran Lexington. Yeah, Let's but be honest. what's the turn rate? That The turn rate on that is uh, better. It's not seven. It's Or three. Let me have a look. The default for modification. Well, I think you can call just about anything a tough little ship, but calling the Defiant a tough little ship, and I think that's the trait that comes from the Defiant, is a pullback to um, the second this TNG movie, right? First TNG. First movie. contact. First contact, yeah. Do you know the base modifier for the Lexington? No. Base turn rate of 8. <laughs> Impulse modifier 0. 0.5. Uh. 0.15. Uh. If you take that and compare it to the Yorktown, you know, the Federation mm -hmm. variant. Base turn rate of 6. Well, that sucks too. But considering the Lexington is a Dreadnought class and it can outmaneuver the Federation variant. Yeah, it's, it's still flying a brick, let's be honest. Yeah. But a fun brick at that. <laughs> okay, it's a fun brick, but it's still a brick. Hey, we're making a change to um, a couple of our fleets to the advantage of everybody out there. Chosens, you've never watched First Contact? Oh, go watch First Contact. In terms of quality of movie, it's probably my second favorite Star Trek movie. Frequently it's my first favorite. But that and Wrath of Khan are both superb. Really good movies. Um, first Contact was Jonathan Frakes, right? Who directed it? Yep. Yeah, he did a great job. I mean, he really did a great job. He excelled at that. Well, let's be honest, the acting in that movie was spot on. Okay, great acting, great dialogue, but his ability to balance the humor versus the serious moments versus the pathos is just really, really good. Um, I, I think... I thought you were going to say really, really, really terrible. No, thing. no. I mean, it's it's got a good balance because 
sometimes when you're watching, um, God, what movies are they lately? It's not the MC universe. Do you get doing something because well, you've only got nine in a minute. The, uh, yeah, I I know. Uh, but talking's important too, Josh. But anyway, I will do that and then we'll do one more thing. But um, getting the balance and not just throwing in humor for the sake of humor, you know, throwing in, tossing out throwaway lines that are a joke that don't fit in with something. And I'm trying to think what was a great example of that. Uh, and I can't off the top of my head, but um, probably Captain Marvel would be the closest I can think of off the top of my head. Ruins a film. It means the director isn't in control and doesn't have a good vision for it. Whereas making it work, using humor to break up really dark moments, um, or reflecting in the case of uh, Worf and Riker when they're doing that one little one little ship uh, line, is just two characters who know each other and know that they can get away with those jokes. And that's also like in Picard season three. The humor works because it really reflects the understanding of the characters and the underlying relationships. Well, let's uh, be honest, Terry, Terry McTellis did a very good job of the way they casted those guys in the third and final season of Picard. Yeah, so uh, I, you guys know that we met Terry McTellis at uh, Star Trek Las Vegas, and Aaron Ionofsky, who directed the last two episodes, and one, oh my god, they're young, and Two, it was genuinely wonderful to see people who love the series and respected it and were determined to give uh, the viewers who love it what they thought they deserved in terms of a quality of show. And it was just <gasps> amazing. Let's see. Patrick Stewart wants to make another TNG movie to follow up Picard season three and he wants Frakes to direct it too. Yeah, me too. Because they left uh, TNG movies kind of eh. And that would be a good kickoff for Star Trek Legacy. Can you imagine? They do one more movie and it kicks off Legacy. Okay, I have seven minutes, as you correctly pointed out. Do you want to do something super fast, like uh, ISA? ISA or not or Patrol. We can do a Patrol. Chris, are you up for a Patrol? Yeah, Chris, they, they just got it in Picard Season 3. Um, which one? What do you want to do? Nine full on event. I can't do elite on this one. Uh, you said advanced. Only advanced. Okay, ninth rule: advanced. Launching. It's just letting Chris know I'm launching, and dogs are barking. Hang on. Hey, baby, baby. Looks like there was a fight. <sighs> baby. Excuse me. I'll be right back. Hey, hey, hey. The Kaja is ready to assist you. Lead the way. Your God will follow. Reading a single Ferengi vessel. Marauder class. They've decloaked. Ah, <sighs> children. <laughs> well, uh, Go. Sorry. Chris's response. Meh. Yeah, it is meh. But it's fun. We need some new patrols. I thought I'd be enough of their ships. So anyway, I'll briefly uh, cover what we've been talking about in terms of fleet changes. Obviously keeping our fleets, but nobody uses our fleet banks in any of our fleet stuff. So we were thinking of when people donate to the fleets, sell it on the exchange, put all the money into the fleet bank, start buying really good stuff and throwing that into the fleet banks so people can have good stuff. We may have time for an IEC. No, I won't. <laughs> I definitely won't have time for that. Remember, I have to take the kiddos out in this uh, lovely, wet... We had a fairly nice amount of dew last night, so I've got my crummy old shoes on. Then I have to come back in and change clothes, because I will be wet from walking the doggos. But one of these days we'll change time again, and it will not be 7 a.m. and still black as the middle of the night.
perfect timing. That it is. Let's see, what have we got here? We've got... Well fought. Lexington. Well fought and Chris the is flying. What is Chris flying here? Hellraiser from Picard Season 2. World Racer, but yes. We'll sure ah, that's not what I wanted nice to do. Party for them. Wrong button. At least one thing, you got a galaxy, an odyssey, and a Nicole. Yeah, I like my Nicole. Alright, I need to go to work and walk the dogs, not in that order. So, um, everybody, we will be back tonight in about 12 hours. I have no idea what we're going to do tonight. I'll figure that out. We will run ISA and ISC for anybody who needs to do those tonight. Um, thank you, Wolfie. You guys have a great day, too. We will see you in a few hours. But in the meantime, everyone, stay awesome.